Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my first transfers video of the summer, at least covering anything non-Arsenal. Although the first transfer we're going to talk about is actually Arsenal related, but it's the only one and it's the only signing we've made so far. And it's not a particularly exciting one because we already had him at the club. Um, I thought I'd start with David Raya. It is confirmed he is signing on permanently. We all knew this would happen. It was a loan with an option to buy, but I think we all knew. I think Brentford knew. I think Arsenal knew. Uh, it was always going to be a permanent deal at the beginning of the new season, which of course starts beginning of July. So um, we didn't see any big movements from Arsenal before that because of obvious reasons, PSR and FFP and all of these rules. But as soon as July came around, Raya is a permanent signing. Um, in these videos, I'm just going to give my thoughts on the signings, and maybe there are a few that you haven't even seen. Obviously, if you've seen the transfers, you're here to hear my thoughts on them, but obviously very pleased with this one. Raya was fantastic last season. Golden Glove winner. Um, I need to click onto the website. There we go. So that way I can tab between them. So the reason I want to talk about this one is because... I think this is worrying. This is a very worrying deal, and it's not the only one. It's just the first one that's come up. But this is Elliot Anderson, of course, Newcastle player. Um, I believe he's a youth academy, an academy graduate up in Newcastle. So if they sell, if any club sells an academy player, it is straight up profit. Um, if you don't know much about PSR and FFP, it's basically clubs needing to play fair. And that means, obviously, not spending more than you're earning, um, fair market value on players that you sell and buy. You can't buy a player that's worth £50 for a million pounds. I know that's obviously a, a wild example, but you understand what I'm saying here? Elliot Anderson, who, by the way, he's a good player. Nothing crazy, nothing special. He's got, he's got a good future ahead of him. I'm sure he'll do well. But €41.2 million? Euros? To put that in perspective, I believe his market value, which of course, market value really means nothing. You're only worth what someone's willing to pay for you, right? But everyone in their right mind knows Elliot Anderson with a market value of around, and I say around, between 12 to 15 million pounds should not be moving for 41 million euros. This stinks. This is so Newcastle didn't break PSR rules. And the fact that Nottingham Forest are doing the deal, we'll talk about that in a moment. But good player. I just, I, I think this is a worrying issue. It's a huge problem. And it's actually something I think needs to be rectified pretty much as soon as possible. I'm not sure they'll be able to do anything in this transfer window, but I'm talking January onwards. This has to be stopped. Whether it's a problem with PSR, whether it's a problem with FFP, something needs to come into play to stop this from happening. Basically, to put it at a very low level here, Newcastle were going to fail the regulations. They were going to break rules if this sale didn't go through. And it's not the only one they made, by the way. It's not the only sale they put through for a ridiculous amount of money, but it's the worst one for sure. Best of luck to Elliot Anderson. He now knows that Newcastle would rather sell him for a lot more money than he's worth just to be within regulations and potentially harm his career. Because let's face it, his career trajectory was higher at Newcastle, but he might do very well. Moving on, this is a really interesting deal. We've got Igor Tiago. Uh, funny enough, so when you go on Transfermarkt, brilliant website, by the way. I absolutely love this website. I'm on it pretty much every day. Um, you can see nationalities and whether they've got heritage or dual, na dual, na uh, dual national citizenship. Is that how you say it? But um, he's Brazilian Bulgarian, which I thought was absolutely fascinating. But this is a Tone replacement for sure. 33 million euros on a striker. You're not going to do that unless potentially one of your strikers is going. And I, I mean that for a club like Brentford, who don't go around spending 30, 40, 50 million on just random players to fill the squad. I think Tony will leave. I don't know where he's going to go. It won't be Arsenal. I'm pretty sure it might be a Tottenham. It might be a Chelsea. I, I don't know. But I haven't seen enough of Igor. But I think it's worth mentioning 
that Tone is probably going to be on the move now. This is another one that stinks. Musa Niakate. Yeah, Niakate. No one really knows much about the guy because, no offence, Nottingham Forest fans, but he's not the most exciting centre-back in the league. No one's going to be really focusing on him. We're all looking at Saliba, Van Dijk and all these great centre-backs. And I'm sure he's a good player. And I've, I've seen him obviously play for Nottingham Forest. He's a good player. 31.9 million euros, 28 years old? No. No, no, no. And guess what? It's a club involved with the Newcastle stuff. It's a club that we're going to break the rules. Everyone knows Nottingham Forest are in financial issues. They spent a lot of money coming into the Premier League. This is, again, just a way to escape it. And now Leon are complicit. They are paying this. And someone, I'm sure it's happening. I'm sure it's happening. But some regulation out there has to be looking at how these clubs are tied. Money is being exchanged here. All particular clubs are doing this. They're giving each other big sales and it's enabling them all to get out of trouble. And the best way to say anything about it is just that it stinks. I hate this. He is not a 30 million euro defender. He's just not. Shocking. It is absolutely shocking. This though, this is a great deal. Big, big fan of this deal. So Bayer Leverkusen just had a worldie of a season. Fantastic under Chabi Alonso. He's here to stay. He wanted a general in midfield that's going to partner up with Granit Xhaka, Palacios, whoever, Andrik, who is also very good. What a signing. 18 million euros for Alex Garcia. This puts things into perspective. I know we're talking Premier League versus Bundesliga. I know we're talking about different positions and different profile of players, but this is this is value. He's actually going for cheaper than his, I would say, his market value, which I, I think is listed around 20 to 25 million euros. This makes much more sense. I'd argue it's a little cheap, but I think he was running down his contract. He probably only had a year or two left at Girona. What a signing. And this, this excites me, this kind of deal. I think it's fair, although Girona maybe should have got a little bit more for him. I think he's going to a club that's going to elevate him. Even further, he's an ex-Man City player, of course. Um, he did really well at Girona, and I cannot wait to see how they deploy him in midfield at Bayer Leverkusen. I mean, does this mean that someone could be leaving? Is he going to play higher up the pitch in like a number, an advanced eight or a number 10 role? Even though I think he's more of a actual number six, number eight that sits back and is, is a deep line playmaker. We'll see how they do that. This is an exciting deal, okay? Jorgen, Jürgen, Jorgen, Jürgen, Strand Larson. I believe he's 24 years old, so he's not like a, a kid that's come out of nowhere. But my God, I've been seeing some clips of this guy. I, I didn't know much about him before. Um, Wolves have snapped him up on loan with a 3 million euro fee. But I believe there is an option to buy. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head how much it is. Uh, it might say it here, actually. He's got a market value of 25 million euros. Uh, my guess is that it was, I think it was 30 or 32 million, something like that. It, it In total, it's going to be around 35. But this guy, whew, he looks good. He looks very, very good. And I think he might be a shout for maybe the underrated signing of the summer so far. Wolves absolutely need goal scorers. It's the one thing I think they're going to really struggle with if they, if they didn't do a deal like this. And obviously now they've lost Kilman um, to West Ham. So they're going to have to bring in a centre back as well. But the fact that it's a loan deal, I think that shows that maybe they didn't have the money available to get this deal done permanently now. But a really, really exciting signing nonetheless. Oh, would you look at that? Another absolute stinker. Yeah, you know that Amari Kellyman, that absolute superstar youngster that's destined for greatness. Yeah, you know it? No? You don't know him? How can you not know Amari Kellyman, the Aston Villa starlet? 22.5 million euros Aston Villa sold him for. Guess his market value. 1 million. I hate it. I hate it so much. I absolutely hate it. Villa, another club that are, well, or were, this happened in June, by the way. Every deal that I've talked about like this so far happened at the end of June because that's for last season's books. This is Book cooking. <laughs> Deal done. 
just in time, lucky Villa. And Chelsea have got themselves an absolute superstar. The thing is, right, you're worth what someone's willing to pay for you, right? But I, I think this fair market value stuff needs to be looked at because that is not a fair market value whatsoever. If Amari Kellyman had played half a season under Chelsea and got a couple of goals from that wing and looked really impressive, then I could kind of, un I could understand a 10 million, 15 million valuation, something like that. But this guy is, I, I mean, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense at all. There, there's no reason for this whatsoever other than needing to make more money out of an academy player. And Chelsea, of course, have done Villa a favour, effectively. Um, yeah, it's 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 almost depressing. I, I want to say that this is potentially the start of the end of football as we know it in the transfer window. There, there are moments in history, if you go back, you think um, Ronaldo's move to Real Madrid. That was the new bar, Bale, things like that. And then we're talking about Neymar going to PSG for 240 million, whatever it is. And luckily, that was a bar that then got lowered because no one was paying that. But now, don't worry, guys. If you've got... Sorry, Amari. I'm sure you're a great player, okay? But we've got an absolute nobody in a Premier League status era, okay? An absolute nobody going for 22 million euros. 22.5 million euros. Make it make sense. This... OK, sorry to bring it back to Arsenal, but it's just the club I support, obviously, and this channel focuses on Arsenal a lot. But this means Emil Smith-Rowe should be worth 70 million. Someone that's actually done something in the Premier League, someone that's got actual value in the Premier League. Of course, he's not worth that. I think, realistically, 22.5 million. I think you're looking at someone that's done what Smith-Rowe has done a year less, I would say. That kind of, that kind of player, it, it, it's just, oh, I hate it. Get it out of my face. Fantastic signing, this one. Crystal Palace, who are incredible at the end of last season. Wow, so good under Glasner. They have maybe got themselves one of the best signings of the summer as well. Kamada on a free. Wow, really, really good signing. Cannot wait to see how Palace do. Of course, they have that. They've sold Elise to Bayern Munich, which was confirmed yesterday, I believe. In the region of 50 million ish. So um, to bring in a player that's going to not replace Elise, but at least help in the attacking threat, the attacking part of the pitch and with their threat going forward for free. Incredible. I'm sure they'll invest that Elise money in a different winger. Now, just to finish up today's video, I wanted to show you some of the free agents available right now. It is frightening. We've got Rabio, free agent. We've got Hermoso as a free agent as well. Uh, Rodriguez, I don't know too much about him. I think he's, he's, yeah, he's 30 years old, so I don't think he'll be um, a groundbreaking signing. We've got Varane. Um, I, I've heard that he could be going to Como, which, of course, um, Cesc Fabregas is managing now. But Varane, free signing. Ndidi, massive one. I was a huge fan of Ndidi. Back when Leicester were one of the top clubs in the Premier League, he was brilliant. Um, I don't know what's happened. I, maybe he hasn't done so well since they've dropped into the championship. And of course, their relegation season, a lot of their best players underperformed. But um, man, a free a free agent in DD. Someone will pick him up for sure. Che Adams as well. Great player that is available for free. Ian Acho, another Leicester player. Of course, Leicester are in financial problems as well. They will be playing with potentially a point deduction in the new season. Um, and they're going to be losing players because they won't be able to give them new deals potentially. And also, as a player, you might be thinking, I don't really want to be here um, with all of the issues going on. We've got Anthony Martial, of course. There's two more in the top 10 here. Andre Gomez, very good free option for someone that needs an experienced midfielder. However, maybe a little bit injury prone. And, oh, they've listed and Andre Gomez twice. Uh, we've got Memphis Depay, of course. Yeah, big one. He's having a great Euros, I think. Um, he'll be up against England very shortly on Wednesday, I believe. So we'll see how that goes down. But um, there's my thoughts on some of the, the big deals that have gone through so far. Um, did I talk about Estevao? I don't think I did. Just quickly at the end here, Chelsea have signed a, a young Brazilian that I think looks better than Endrick. 
Um, Esteval, it's a name to remember for sure. He looks very, very good. Um, but that transfer won't go through till next season. So yeah, one to watch out for. But thank you for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.